Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Robot X. Check out the previous series to see my walking Star Wars gonk droid, which is entirely 3D printed and pretty much works. I found there's quite a lot of flexibility in some of the 3D printed parts there because the whole thing is basically made of plastic. So for this project I've made something quite a lot more substantial which is this that we made last time which is made of aluminium 2020 extrusion with 3D printed parts and it's driven by lead screws on these drill motors. So uh, since last time I've actually had the opportunity to make another one so now we've got two feet and two lower legs. And this time we're going to work our way up the legs and hopefully get the hips done. So let's take a closer look at what we've got. A few people have asked if I'm going to put Ultron's body on the legs once they're done. And unfortunately that won't be possible because Ultron is really heavy. It's quite an effort for me to lift it and move it around with all the stuff that we've got in there. So we're going to have to make a much lighter body. The plan is though that this droid will be dressed up as different characters when it's done. One of those will be Bender from Futurama. And then we can go on to transform it into Terminator. So once the main construction is done and it's walking, there'll be some mini series turning it into different characters. Just a quick recap on what we've built here. Obviously all of this is aluminium extrusion. All of these parts that are gray are printed in Colorfab HT, which is a nice filament with really good layer bonding. So these piston parts, for instance, are built with the layer lines going this way, and they're still really tough to take the whole load of the robot. We've got these motors with lead screws either side, so when they both push forward and backwards, the leg will lean forward and backwards. And if they push and pull, it will move the leg sideways. And I did a quick demo at the end of part one on that. The rest of these parts are blue ABS, really just for the colour, although the ABS is slightly more rigid than the Colorfab HT. But I do have various metal brackets and things in this, which hold all of this at right angles to make it really strong. So we've got both the lower legs there, there's a lot more detail in part one as I say, and now let's look at the CAD for the upper legs. If you watch my Gonk Droid series, you'll already know that that looks very similar, and of course the legs here are parallelograms, which I explained um, in the Gonk Droid series part one, why I took this approach and we looked at some previous projects I built. We're using the same approach here, so of course the top of the leg is another parallelogram, and that's pretty much the identical pieces printed, so at the knee we left these uh, double hinge points, and of course at the top we have a single hinge point which is very similar to what we've got at the bottom there so that we can uh, bring this the leg up here and these things you'll notice have a single support at the back so we've got space to get another two motors in and of course the two motors will be fitted to exactly the same brackets the other way up and they will push up to the pivot point at the top of the leg we do need to do something slightly different because we need the legs to rotate as well we'll come on to that shortly here they are, and these parts are extremely similar. In fact, they're identical to the parts I made in part one, so I haven't bothered going through making these in this video. Obviously, we've got the corner brackets again there, so we have on those parts, and um, it's exactly the same assembly, in fact, so we can go right ahead and put those onto the top of the legs. Right, here they are, so they're uh, almost as tall as my legs, a little bit shorter. They're actually 25% uh, bigger than gonk droid legs. But uh, there we go, so they're, um, obviously the tops aren't attached to anything yet, they've got no actuators in, so those are free to move, but obviously the bottoms are stiff, so they look a pretty good scale for what I'm trying to achieve, let's just hope the motors are powerful enough. And of course again, in the tops of the legs we've got these anchor points for the motors which will come up here, so now we need to think about the rotary axis that allows this leg to rotate, so the robot can move its feet apart so that it can turn on the spot. And of course we tried to do this with a gonk droid, although it didn't work very well, it was okay, but basically what we need to do to turn on the spot of course is lean over one way and spread the legs that way and then put this one back and then do this so we can turn around. And um, there is a, a demo of the gonk droid doing this in the channel in the one of the parts towards the end of the gonk droid series, but uh, due to the motor not being that powerful and not being that strong it didn't work very well and it's a bit hit and miss. So hopefully this will be a lot more pragmatic the joints are a lot more rigid so it can lean over right to one side, pick up that leg and move it and do it in a much slower sort of fashion. So we have a pivot point here anyway, which is to make the leg lean this way of course. But what really concerns me is if I put these on a big rotary axis to turn this way, that axis itself has some extra play. So side to side is not so bad since we need it to pivot anyway. If there's a bit of play it won't probably affect things that much. Um, but moving this way, 
We really don't want any extra play in that axis, if you can imagine a rotary shaft here with some means for this to rotate. So um, I'm gonna do two things to try and uh, stop that. Uh, with the gonk droid, basically I took the upper leg actuators, finished them at the pivot point, and then I put a rotary axis on top, which seemed to make quite a lot of sense. But it did mean if there was any play in that rotary axis, the whole leg would wobble in um, all of the directions, because the actuators in the leg here only deal with the top section. So this time I'm actually gonna take the actuators up past the rotary axis, so they help give it extra stability past that axis, and we'll look at the CAD in a moment. The other thing I'm gonna do is make sure that that rotary axis is really substantial. Here are some large bearings and a piece of steel. This is stainless steel tube, it's quite substantial. We're gonna mount the actual leg on that, and we're gonna mount these bearings, which are ball bearing races. Uh, two of them on, on this with a nice collar in between to hold it nice and tight, and we're gonna mount the leg on that, bringing those actuators sort of right up past this rotary axis and past the other two axis. So here's the assembly so far. We're gonna make a lot of box sections out of aluminium extrusion, and we're gonna make that section top and bottom really rigid with these uprights and probably metal brackets in there somewhere and a lot of other bits and pieces. So uh, the metal shaft here goes all the way through and that's got a stopper on the top and bottom basically, which is kind of a clamp that goes around it. And that's gonna hold the bearing in these red bearing blocks. And these are all gonna be printed in Color Fab HT. The blue parts will be ABS just to match the color scheme there. So we've got a, basically a bearing held in from the bottom with one of these clamps and held in from the top. And that's going to basically hold the bearings on this big assembly. And then my um, shafts up and down should be um, extremely rigid. And the clamp at the bottom has two holes to attach to the extrusion where the top of the pivot is here. And we've also got this kind of triangle shape built out holding the shaft higher up. So that should minimize all the wobble. So then of course I mentioned the actuators are gonna come past that rotary stage. So they'll couple on before where they did. And um, as before they went down to the foot here. So that would be at this level that in fact I'm gonna couple them to these and these. So they actually come up and they twist slightly with that rotary axis but that gives me extra stability past the rotational point. So hopefully that will help hold the legs uh, rigid side to side if there is any play. And front to back, we've got these triangular sections holding them. So I'm hoping that's gonna be pretty rigid. We have got some really big parts to print here. So we've got quite a lot of printing ahead and lots of aluminium to cut. Here's one of my giant bearing blocks being printed. There's quite a lot of filament in there. So far it's been running for eight hours. So I think it's about a 12 hour print, but we'll see how much it weighs when it's done and if there's enough left on the spool for another one. Okay, so there's my completed bearing block. The bearing is uh, stuck in there pretty well. It's a really tight fit. I've managed to get quite good tolerances out of this color fab stuff. So uh, it was a 12 hour print, so I've got four of them to make. You'll notice this is black and not the same as the gray. There's a bit of a courier issue and the rest of the gray hasn't turned up. So I had um, some black and some white that I was testing before. That's the white I've made the collars out of there to sit the bearings on. So it's gonna be a bit multicolored at the top. Hopefully the gray will arrive in time for the other pieces. So um, basically the uh, collars here support the bearings. So that uh, collar there will support that bearing. And um, of course these Clamps go on to hold it either side, so these bearing blocks will sit on the aluminium frame and that should hold this nice and sturdy. There's the bottom clamp I mentioned and that one has recessed holes in which go all the way through so I can bolt that down to a piece of 2020 extrusion the other way. Just starting to put my frame together here, so we've got these corners that hold it rigid that way and of course this big block is bolted through these holes which are very much countersunk so the screws are long enough with T-nuts into this frame. So this is either the top one or the bottom one looking from the bottom. So we've got these uh, collars that go in here. So then my uh, stainless steel fits through there. It's a pretty tight fit and we've got these caps and this is the one that goes on the bottom so that it can be screwed onto the 2020 extrusion that goes there. You'll notice this one's shorter than the top one. So I can have another bar in here and this will rotate inside it. The top one is bigger because we don't have the bar in here and that stops the uh, tube slipping out. So we need to continue to put that together. Still waiting for a couple more of these to print. 
I'm doing these ones in uh, slightly less perimeters and a slightly less dense infill and I think that should be about nine hours instead of 12. Right, I've got two of these now. So we've got our top set done and uh, some of our uh, rods between and this is the bottom set. So we're just waiting for one more of these to print. There's actually about an 11 hour print in the end. I didn't save much time with that lower infill density. And then we can put this together, stack it up and start getting it assembled. Right, here's the whole assembly together. We've got our four bearing blocks finally and the top and the bottom there. And I've put some plates in here. I do in fact have the corner brackets in here that holds that nice and rigid. There's none going the other way, but I think that's, to be honest, gonna be more than strong enough once those poles are going through and everything else. Now, these are the parts that mount the legs. So these are the hinges along the bottom. And obviously on here, we've got those blocks. So I've printed those as well. And these are in light gray color fab HT. Exactly the same material, just a slightly lighter gray. Um, they're incredibly solid. And again, we've got the split there so we can put a bolt through it six mil this time to clamp that together around the shaft. And the thing that fits in there is another bit of extrusion that will bolt in and that comes down to this bracket and that makes me a nice assembly to fit that whole leg onto. Right, here's the bottom view with it all together. So obviously these legs can uh, bend all around more than enough for uh, turning on the spot and so on. Don't need to move anywhere near that far. They will eventually be uh, on an actuator that pushes them apart and that's likely to be a linear thing down the front here, perhaps another lead screw that actually pushes out on a V and pushes and pulls those together. Uh, in the short term, I'm just gonna lock them in place by putting in some cross bracing so that they're rigid and then we can put the motor in when we come to put that axis in. But altogether, it seems pretty rigid. And of course, the actuators will come up and go to either side here and to either side here. So that gives additional stability around this axis and of course this piece is stationary while these turn, so there'll be a little bit of rotation in those um, actuators, but that should all be good. I've just put a temporary piece in here which locks this together so that uh, basically it doesn't wobble until I've built the actuator that goes on the front there. So this is incredibly rigid and that'll stop the legs rotating until I come on to the time when I need to make them rotate. Whoops, it's a bit on the heavy side, but it at least will give it some center of gravity around its hips, which means it should be able to twitch its hips side to side rather than its top flailing around. I've just propped that on the legs for now. Obviously they look quite skinny because they don't have the actuators in the thighs, which is the next thing we need to come on to. But it's looking okay in terms of scale. Obviously you can see the top of the legs there are about 25% higher than the gonk droid. And this whole section is basically the lower body. It's where the abdominal muscles and so on would be. So the top of the body is going to be actually quite small with the arms stuck on, and that should give us a character about five feet tall. So let's talk about these actuators. When I did the ankle actuators, I had a few issues because this is actually quite loose, um, and that causes the ankle not to be as rigid as it should be. And that's mainly because I've just got one of these lead screws with a nut in it and nothing else supporting it, and there is quite a lot of wobble in that nut. So um, ideally, I'd have another parallel shaft here attached to this piece or attached to the top, and a linear slider that goes up and down to help hold this rigid. Uh, preferably there'd be one each side with the nut in the middle if there was space to do it. I'm actually gonna do something slightly different from the hips because I actually need the twist in this. So those actuators can twist as the hip twists with the actuators passing by them. So for now, I've just redesigned that bottom part so that we've got basically two nuts in there and that holds this thing quite a lot more rigid. So they're basically two of the nuts off the uh, normal lead screws facing the opposite direction to each other. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually have enough nuts to go around to do this on all of them. I've got some more arriving. So for now, we're gonna have to put it together with just one nut, but I've got some more nuts arriving and I'll stick those in at the bottom there and I'll do that to all the actuators to make them a lot more rigid. The other reason there's wobble in the first place on this is because there isn't force directly onto the nut through the ends here, because these pivot points are off center on both the motor and the bottom. So that means as this thing um, applies force either way, actually causes this to, to bend in and out. I've got slightly more length in the hips though because we're coming up past that extra stage. So now I've built these uh, universal joints which are a bit more typical looking with the uh, all the pivot points in a line here. The only thing that hasn't got the pivot point in line again is the motor which is the same as the hips. We'll have to see how that works out and of course we could refine any of these parts as we go along. I've attached those to the bottom of the uh, pelvis piece here so these can now come down to the legs and uh, these pieces are the hinges of course we looked at before and of course these actuators are attached 
onto this frame and these pieces will rotate in between them eventually. It's time to put the whole thing together, so I've put my lead screws in the actuators there, ready to go into the chucks, and I just need a bar to go through these to make the hinge points, and then it should all stand up by itself. Right, here it is all together, so it's standing up, it's pretty sturdy, there is some play in those actuators, but as I say, I haven't put the two nuts in each one, and the anchor ones remain as they are, so there is a bit of wobble there, but the key test is if I pick this up, and hang it on one side, you can see the legs don't droop together, which means it is actually uh, rigid enough at the extents of those actuators. There's a bit of play just in the middle, but actually, if it were balancing on one side, then uh, it should be able to happily support the weight of the other leg without that drooping. So we're going to pose it in a one leg stance in a minute to see how well that works. But for now, it looks pretty good. And of course, having this triangle piece here means we get exactly the same this way with the legs don't droop as I pick it up even though we've got those rotary axis, so altogether it seems pretty rigid. We can still see we've got those wobbly actuators at the back, you can see these moving quite a bit, so eventually those will get upgraded to the ones with two nuts in, and I may even put that extra parallel bar in to stop that wobble in them. You can see a bit of wobble in the top ones there, obviously with the other nut in there that'll be much better. I'm not sure how much having these in line actually helps, but uh, we'll have to refine it as we go. Right, the final way in so far, that is without batteries and electronics, is that is 19.6 kilograms. Don't know if you can just see it from there. I've just balanced it up in a static position there, so one leg is completely off the ground and it can hold that position perfectly well. It won't have to do that very often unless I particularly want to make it stand on one leg. Typically it will be moving backwards and forwards or side to side, I should say, in quicker succession. Uh, but it is quite rigid and will hold its position there. There is a little bit of wobble, some of that is inherent bend in the plastic and some of it is still the actuators on this leg I can still see moving around, so we should be able to minimise that. The plan is to put an inertial measurement unit in each leg as well as one in the body so we can get the legs and the body to hold exact positions in space and that should mean the motors and all the control system could compensate for any wobble in any case. I'm pretty happy with the build so far. I'm hoping with that mass that we've got around the hips there, and there is going to be some upper body to come, with the mass there I'm hoping we can get it to shift its mass like this and twitch its hips side to side to take steps, a bit more like a human rather than swaying its whole top around. And this is a bit like Android 7 that I showed you in the first part of my Gonk Droid series, which is one of my very old builds. And it worked just like that and it walked in quite a sort of uncanny human way. So I'm hoping I can achieve the same with this. So there's going to be some more updates next time, fitting electronics, fitting some feedback pots, and generally continuing with the build. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. You can also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. I also have a t-shirt store, check out the Spreadshirt links in the description below. I have a European store and a US store, and I have a limited edition design which will no longer be available after the end of January 2017. There'll be another design after that though, so don't forget to check that out. Alright, that's all for now.